In a past video, I explained how template type deduction works. Now, let's take this a step further and dive into constructor type deduction. In the old days, any class template had to have all template arguments known in order to be used. Example, if you wanted to use a vector, you needed to explicitly specify the type it contained. Exactly as you can see here. Things got worse when you wanted something with more arguments. For example, a tuple. Here you go. As you can see, we need to explicitly say that we contain an int, a double, and a character. Fortunately, we had helper functions which use template type deduction, as explained in the previous video, so we could write, for example, t equals std make tuple from 1 to and C. And the type of T is well known. Still, they weren't available for every case and not many people created them for their own code. So the situation was quite weird. We had compilers which could guess what type C we had in mind, as you can see here, but we still needed to do manual work. At some point, people came up with an idea to leverage constructors to deduce the types. Therefore, now we have the ability to skip explicit type specifications when creating our objects. Let's see. Let's create our tuple again, but this time let's omit explicit template arguments. So we write std tuple as before, but now we simply add the contained values. And that's it. Notice we didn't need to specify any types at all. All of this was guessed from constructor arguments alone. This not only works for objects created on the stack, but also for objects created dynamically. For example, console v equals new std vector of 1, 2. Here you go. Of course, this is bad code with a memory leak, but it shows how you can omit template type arguments at all. So the natural question becomes, how to use it in our own classes? Well, let's see. We often don't need to do anything other than declaring a constructor with given template parameters. So for example, if you make a template class, class D widget, let's give it a constructor, taking a D, we simply need to call this constructor to have T deduced. As you can see here, our widget has been deduced to a widget of int, exactly like we've written. Of course, you are not only limited to the template parameters in your constructor, but you can also add your own. Just remember, the template one needs to be there somewhere. So we can, for example, add a float here, float int add a float here, and everything works as expected. One was deduced to be an int. We can even make our constructors a template themselves. Class u, and let's remove load and add u. And again, everything works because we have t here, the template arguments were deduced. But sometimes it's not possible to create such constructors. One example might be making template ones which can convert its parameters to the class template parameter type. For example, if we remove t here, and remove one here, of course, this code no longer compiles. This situation is quite common with collections which tend to permit initialization from a pair of iterators. For example, let's look at our vector. As you can see, a vector can be initialized from a pair of iterators with their own type, and the type the vector should contain is not explicitly stated anywhere. So what to do in those cases? Well, we need to give the compiler some hints of what the template parameter types should be. You can use special guide syntax to create a, let's call it mapping, from the actual constructor to the type which should be deduced. In the iterator case, the hint would look something like this. We start with the template keyword, then we add our template parameters for the constructor. So it will be our input iterator, then our value type, which we can infer from iterator traits, and our allocator. Now we specify the actual constructor call. It would take our two iterators, 
and an allocator with a default value. Now we use the special arrow syntax to specify what is the resulting type of such constructor call. It will be a vector of type T and a K tor. Calling such constructor with two input iterators and an allocator will result in a vector of type T and an allocator of type, well, allocator. Now let's apply that to our widget class. So again, we start with template class u. We specify that our constructor call widget u will result in widget of u. Not very creative, but why not? And let's create our widget again and see what happens. As you can see, now type t if our, in our widget was properly deduced from our template constructor using type u. This syntax is quite easy to understand, at least in my opinion, and use. You can also add an explicit, explicit keyword here to make the constructor behave well like it would be here. So I hope this short video shows you how constructor template type deduction works. I hope you found this informative, I hope you found this interesting. If you have any questions, post them down below, keep subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.